So our next speaker is Amit Frischberg, who is here from Irit Gatvix Laboratory in Tel Aviv. Um, they do really beautiful work dissecting intracellular gene regulatory networks, and Amit is here to talk about deconvolving bulk RNA-seq data using single-cell RNA-seq. Okay, great. So thank you for the representing me. Uh, my name is Amit Frischberg, and I'm also I'm, okay from Irvat Gatvik's lab. I'll try to tell you about a new method that we developed uh, to uh, discover cell composition using uh, single cell and bulk data, and uh, I'll try to convince you that this is maybe the appropriate way to do it. So uh, tell me later if it's correct. Okay, so first of all, why do you need um, to understand cell composition in general? So uh, uh, basically, if, basically if uh, we have, uh, for example, uh, healthy and sick individuals, uh, we would like to uh, compare the, the composition of cell, of cell, cell types or cell states uh, between these uh, individuals. Uh, for example, here you can see that maybe there are more uh, cells from this type of cell type and maybe less here and probably more here than here. And, and, uh, and if we understand uh, the, the cell composition in, uh, in these two uh, states, so uh, we probably will understand more about the disease and how to treat it maybe. Uh, but, the, but the challenge is that uh, how can we find this, this cell composition in an unbiased way uh, in a very large cohort of individuals? So uh, one solution, as uh, as, as uh, said before, is uh, using uh, cell deconvolution. So for for who that doesn't know what is cell deconvolution, the idea is if you have a genetic profile, for example, uh, we use uh, gene expression profiles in bulk data. Uh, then if you if you know the uh, for each one of the cell type, if you know uh, the expression profile of this cell type. You can use a linear model, uh, such as regression models, to to uh, calculate for each one of the cell types what is qu what its quantity in the in the in the bulk data. This is in general. Uh, but how can we find how can we obtain these these cell type profiles? So the uh, naive way to do it is to use uh, sorting, uh, and it was used uh, it was done many times in the, in the past, and it was uh, until single cell it's the main was the main thing. Uh, so if you take the whole tissue <coughs> and then separate uh, each cell type into, into uh, distinct cell types, and then uh, you take each one of the cell types and, and do a profiling of its gene expression, so you'll get, for each, for each cell type, you'll get the, the, profile, the, cell, uh, the gene expression profile of this cell type. <clears throat> uh, for example, we did a project uh, on this kind of analysis, uh, uh, published in 2015, where we took uh, a mouse, mouse uh, gene expression, uh, 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 sorry, uh, reference data uh, containing two 207 cell types, and, uh, uh, and bug data from mice with and without breast cancer, and we, and we showed that we can uh, find a uh, Quite complex model of uh, changes between uh, uh, cell quantities in in uh, tumor-bearing, tumor-free mice based on the convolution algorithms. But uh, cell sorting is 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 quite biased. First of all, you need to uh, parallelly select selecting uh, the cell types that you want to, to have in your in your prof in your profiles. Uh, also, you you um, usually people use uh, cell compositions. Um, cell profiles from uh, already sorted data because they can't sort all of these cell types in advance. So uh, usually the cell types are not well adapted to their study. And uh, also in, in sorting you are dependent on the availability of markers and antibodies. So everything is biased so you get uh, uh, cell types that are not necessarily close to what you want. Uh, so a better solution is to use uh, a single cell data for that matter. Uh, for example, if we have this uh, matrix of uh, cells and, uh, and, and genes, 
we can uh, cluster these these cell these uh, uh, profiles into into cell types, and even maybe find a new uncharacterized cell type, and then just uh, take the average of each of each cell type as as the profile uh, for for the, for the, the convolution. But the problem is that you lose all the variation in, in the side of, side of cell type uh, using this. Uh, so. Why, why the variation is important? Um, this is a uh, strange question to ask in this conference. But uh, so, for example, if you if you have a different, a, some kind of stimulation, so uh, different uh, cell cells in the cell type will act differently in this uh, stimulation. Uh, for example, you, if we have a specific traje trajectory. So different cells will will be across this trajectory, and and maybe there'll be several subsets that are affected differently. And if you just use the average prediction, average cell type for the prediction, we will get to we, we will get quantities for this cell type, but it's it's not what we want. We want to see the whole variation. And later I'll show you why this is very important to see the variation in in quantities. So we developed a CPM, a cell population mapping. And this, this uh, algorithm analyzes thousands of cell, of cell profiles, uh, different cell states inside each one of the, of the cell types. And, and, and we are focused on, on, on the different cell states and, and not cell types. And we are focused on cell states within cell types. OK, so what does this even mean? OK, so for the first step of, of, uh, of uh, using CPM is to have your uh, uh, cell space. Um, so cell space can be a uh, multi-dimensional uh, cell space using uh, dimensional reduction, PCA, or uh, TSNE, or anything that you want to use. Uh, but it also can be a one-dimensional trajectory, for, as, as I sh showed you before in the variation. So uh, you, can, you can choose which, whichever uh, makes, makes more sense for you. Then CPM uh, does an iterative uh, 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 process where in each iteration it, cho it chooses only a small subset of the cells in each one of the uh, cell types. For it, so it chooses uh, a, a from each cell type uh, only small small subset of the cells, and then it chooses it unbiasedly so that we will have representation of different uh, area of the cell space for each one of the cell types, uh, and then uh, we only account for these genes. That are, that are dis uh, distinguishing between uh, cells in the specific subset of cells using the analysis. So we're doing thousands of, of uh, iterations using only subsets of reference, reference subsets, and then we combine all of them. And uh, eventually, we are just looking at the cell space, and we uh, average all the predictions all this, uh, using cell neighborhoods. And we do this to, to do two, two things. First of all, to increase robustness, because cell neighborhoods are more robust than, than, than cells. And uh, also, do you want to extrapolate the, the prediction all over the entire cell state? Uh, yeah, maybe I'll change. No. Ah uh, yeah, okay. Okay, so uh, okay, I can even speak by, by, uh, without the microphone. So uh, um, so we have this. Uh, um, so we have now the, the extrapolation all over the cell space. Okay, you hear me on the. I don't know which which microphone. And uh, for for testing our algorithm, I'm hearing myself twice. <laughs> um, we. We used the single cell data that uh, was originally also uh, uh, created by our, in our lab uh, by Sturman et al. Uh, 2018. In this data, we had a single cell, uh, nine uh, cell types uh, uh, in, mice, in mice data. Uh, I'm sorry for the small number here, but this is what we had. Uh, and uh, and uh, uh, the important thing is that we, Sturman uh, found uh, uh, 100 activation markers that actually uh, can can define if if uh, if cells are less activated or highly activated after influenza infection, and we used we will use it later, and uh, and uh, for this project we created uh, uh, also a cohort of uh, of mice 
of bulk data mice from 38 collaborative cross mice. These mice are special because they have large genetic heterogeneity, so they have also light, large uh, uh, phenotypic heterogeneity. This was really important for us. And we measured the, the, the uh, body weight loss after, uh, ah, I forgot to say it's really important that the, the, the CPM paper was published a week, a week ago in Nature Methods. So uh, maybe it's important. Okay, so, um, so we, uh, we measured the body weight loss and also, uh, of course, uh, RNA seq of these mice. And we had the single self before. before. Uh, the next, next uh, step it was to uh, calculate for each, for each um, cell and cell state across the, the cell space of, this, of, of the single cell to calculate the quantity for each one of the mice. For example, if you, you can see here that for this mice, all over the, the activation state, for a, in a lowest activation state, it has a high quantity of, of cells, and uh, in, a, in a high activation state, it has low quantity of cells, and you can see different uh, mice with different react, react reactions. And uh, the next stage, we, we uh, phase, we, we uh, uh, use the, the abundance of cells and the weight loss to calculate the correlation of each activation state across activation states for, for all these mice. So for a more specific uh, uh, example, here we have three mice, and we have one which is uh, highly uh, resistant to, to influenza, so it doesn't really uh, reduce its weight. And uh, one, one, mice with one mouse which is highly susceptible, and another mouse which is intermediate. And, and uh, using a CPM, we could uh, predict that, uh, that uh, the, 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 the one over here had a higher increase rate, higher, uh, is lower uh, quantity of, uh, of uh, cell quantities in these activations. And in higher activation, it has much more quantities than others. And we can ca calculate uh, for this, for all, each one of the, of the states in, within cell types. We, could we can calculate the uh, correlation uh, of all these uh, 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 mice. So, uh, so this is what we got for, for the MPS cells. And, and we can see that there is continuous increase uh, in correlation between, between uh, 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 the, the activation cells and, and, uh, and the cell quantity. And this is the, maybe the important thing that I wanted to show in my, in my presentation that, okay, first of all, we, can, we could va validate this and, and see that in, in uh, uh, inflama inflammatory MPS, we, we see this also in fax, the, 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 the positive correlation, and, and we were well, actually the first to, so, to, to, to show that in a, a naive MPS, we see a negative correlation and in, in actually increase in, uh, a decrease in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in correlation. And, but, but the important thing is that if you take all MPS, if you just do uh, standards at uh, the convolution, use standard convolution algorithm, you, you will see this. And in all MPS, we have no, no, no trend, so no correlation. So you have to see this kind of trend within cell types in order to see the actual effect of, uh, for example, here, the activation. And uh, so, so this is what I, what I said. So we, you have to do it uh, uh, within cells, uh, within cell types. And uh, positive application, of course, it is to use the, 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 the developing uh, human cell atlas in order to take uh, different genetic uh, bulk, bulk uh, uh, samples, a large, large cohort of, of bulk samples, and to, and to study the cellular autogeneity and the relationship with the disease, which is really, I think, exciting. Uh, last but not least, uh, I want to thank uh, everyone that were part of this project. Irit and uh, in our lab, of course. Also, uh, importantly, uh, Naama, which did all the um, wet analysis, all the mice, uh, and she is co-author in the in the paper. Um, Ido Amit's lab also helped us with the data, and uh, and Shiva Medical Center, Michal Menbaun, and and uh, our collaborator in Tao, Iran Bachach, and Leo Mario, and Fuad Iraqi. Thank you very much. Sorry, uh, my mic is, seems to be working now. Um, uh, any questions, please, for me? For, yeah. 
don't know if you're, you might uh, Hi, oh, it kind of works. No. Interesting part, I, so this is about deconvolution, right? And, and it's yeah. not about deconvolving single uh, sort of averages of clusters, but if you have a continuous trajectory, right? Yeah. If you have a, a whole set of discrete stuff, you could just use any old things. Yeah, right? of course, right? yeah. Yeah. So it's really about the, 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 the continuous. Yeah. Your approach was with the subsampling so that you basically cover multiple traces. Wouldn't like a full Bayesian type of approach writing it up? Because I mean, the convolution is a forward thing, so you can. So I, I guess you, you've been thinking about like writing up the full inverse problem and solving this. Well, we, we were not focused on this on this yeah. question. Of course, it's 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 an amazing idea to do yeah. to do something like uh, um, causality yeah. and. Uh, but uh, but in this in this uh, paper we we had to focus on uh, it was a big yeah. paper anyway uh, we need to focus yeah. on uh, specific things. Um, I think that um, you're right. It, it's it's uh, cell, cell type. Uh, we are not the uh, we we, did, we show in the paper that we are similar to what cell type the convolution algorithm can achieve. But but we don't focus on it and this and and I think that uh, we actually sh show that uh, this is sometimes a misleading. Idea, in specifically oh, yeah, in yeah. using single cell because because uh, first of all you can't see these effects using yeah. uh, cell types, but also when you look at cell types, you don't really know what you're seeing, and and here you you can choose not only the activation uh, uh, states that we choose, you can choose metabolism states and uh, and uh, different trajectories, uh, what uh, ER stress and. And, and you can see how these these are changing mm. uh, in on uh, uh, in the direct trajectory. But you can also we also show in the paper that uh, it's not only for the trajectories, but also for the, like different subset subsets of the, of the cells. We are also much better in this because we we find we find this 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 distinction and and and, and even if you find re quite homogeneous cell types, eventually they are not homogeneous. Because you can, you can see you know, in each uh, dimensional reaction that the, you, you have a variance. So substructure, substructure, so basically you do it for more fine grained clustering. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I really like also this idea because it's important for the kind of cells that I was talking about yesterday. So um, <laughs> uh, it seems like it could also be useful, even not in deconvolution of bulk, but that idea could be useful in other kinds of single cell. No, I, trying to preserve the idea of continuous variation. Um, yes, there's one question over there, and then I think that will be the last one. Thank you for your talk. Uh, so I just have a short question. Uh, have you tried to see, for example, how uh, the length of this trajectory actually affects your, your technique? So mm -hmm. if you have a long trajectory, so um, do you think that maybe you should just divide it into two cell types instead of oh, just yeah. downsampling the whole trajectory? Yeah, that, that's an excellent question. We actually, we, we, we show it in the, in the paper that we, I didn't want to sh show it here because I, did, I have the time limit, but uh, uh, of course, it can't. It can happen. It can happen. But we show that uh, that uh, you can't divide this uh, this trajectory, this trend, into any type of uh, of um, of uh, spaces uh, 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 that, that shows that there's only like a subset of of of, uh, of, uh, of cells. We 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 show this uh, probabilistically. We showed this. Uh, we proved this uh, uh, in, a, in a test. So okay. it's, it's really, really continuous all over the trajectory. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I think we'll